to introduce John Jeffries. Good evening, everyone. John Jeffries, Board of Selectmen. Robin Hunter. Good evening, everyone. Robin Hunter. Our Town Administrator, Chris Dwelly. Our Assistant Town Administrator, Kate O'Brien. Uh, and our Project Manager, Dave Sullivan. Um, our guest tonight, um, Denise Garlick. Thank you very much, Denise. And Eric Worrell uh, from the Department of, Edu of uh, Environmental Protection. Um, so, um, to begin, um, we've asked Eric um, to give an overview of um, events that he's been monitoring um, to sort of kick off the meeting. Eric? You muted. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Excellent. Okay. Thank you for coming. Oh, you're very welcome. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, so I'm Eric Worrell. I'm the Regional Director of MassDEP's Northeast Region. Uh, our territory includes the town of Dover. Uh, MassDEP has delegation from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency to implement the provisions of the Federal Safe Drinking Water Act. And we also have statutory authority under the Mass General Laws and as well as the Massachusetts Drinking Water Regulations to regulate public water supplies in the Commonwealth, which includes Colonial Water Company. So our most recent involvement with Colonial, uh, we were notified by Colonial Water Company on June 11th at about 3 p.m. that uh, the results of routine SAMP bacteria samples that they took came back uh, positive for E. coli bacteria, uh, both at the plant tap as well as within the distribution system. Um, that uh, presence of bacteria represents an exceedance of the maximum contaminant level for bacteria and requires the immediate issuance of a boil water order by the department. So uh, we informed uh, Colonial Water Company of this obligation. Uh, we provided them with the public notice about two hours after they informed us of these results and followed up with the issuance of the unilateral order requiring the boil water order. So that order, in addition to requiring uh, consumers to boil their water before consuming it, uh, also required them to conduct follow-up bacteria monitoring, flush the system to try to pull that contaminated water out of the system, implement their emergency response plan, and conduct a level two assessment. And a level two assessment is an uh, undertaking to try to identify what the cause of the contamination of the system is. Um, and because this is not the first instance of uh, an issue like this with Colonial Water Company's wells, uh, they had a similar incident at the Draper Road wells last summer. Uh, we also required them to hire an independent third party consultant to assist them with that effort to uh, try to identify the cause of this contamination. Um, Colonial represented to DEP that they did provide that notice within 24 hours as required by the drinking water regulations through a combination of uh, using their call out system, phone calls, as well as distributing hard copies of the public notice to all their customers. Um, the department is aware that some residents believe they did not receive that public notice. And uh, at this point, our efforts are focused on trying to resolve this um, current boil water issue, um, but that is something that we will be looking into in the future. So uh, after that notice was provided and the order was issued, um, Colonial uh, proceeded to disinfect their wells, uh, as well as begin flushing the system by installing bleeders on the end of fire hydrants, again, to try to pull that water through the system and try to eliminate the bacteria present in the system. And I'll repeat this a couple of times, but in order for DEP to lift a boil water order, we need to have two clean rounds of sampling, um, essentially on two consecutive days or greater than 12 hours apart. And unfortunately to date, we have not been able to get those clean samples. Um, when it became clear after a couple of days that simply disinfecting the wells and flushing at hydrants was not going to resolve this issue. Um, we sent a staff engineer, a drinking water staff engineer out to the Francis Street wells and met with their public water supply operator and directed them to immediately implement an emergency chlorination system 
to begin introducing chlorine into the system to try to resolve the bacteria hits. Um, that plan was approved by the department on June 18th and was followed by an amendment to the original unilateral order to ensure that it was enforceable. Um, that um, improved the situation slightly, but again, still did not resolve the situation. And so a few days later, the department directed Colonial to increase the chlorine dosage rate in the system. Again, continue flushing, continue taking samples to try to resolve the situation. Um, that resulted in a significant improvement, but we were still getting um, stray hits at different parts, either in the distribution system or at the plant tap. Um, I should also mention that during this time, we also directed Colonial Water Company to, um, even though it's not required by regulations, we requested that they provide bottled water to the residents so people would have a safe um, supply of drinking water to consume. Um, they have been regularly restocking that bottled water supply, and I believe they have another several hundred cases of bottled water being delivered tomorrow um, to provide to residents over the weekend. Um, Again, we were hopeful that these um, actions being undertaken would resolve the situation. Unfortunately, it has not. Um, yesterday's sample results still indicated the presence of uh, bacteria at one location within the distribution system. Uh, we met with Colonial Water Company earlier today and had a follow-up discussion with uh, the town administrator and the legislative delegation. Um, and essentially what we have now, uh, I should mention that they were operating that chlorination system from essentially 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, at night and then shutting the system down, which has to be monitored by a certified drinking water operator at all times and then restarting it again in the morning. And our best guess at this point is that the uh, shutting the system down at night is um, causing the chlorine residual within the system to essentially go away, which would be the reason why we're still having some bacteria hits in the system. So we directed them earlier uh, today, this afternoon, and they have agreed um, to implement that chlorinating system 24 hours a day. Again, under the presence of a certified water operator to ensure there are no type of chemical overfeeds to monitor within uh, the system to ensure you're getting a good chlorine residual and to continue to follow up with additional bacteria monitoring. Um, we are hopeful that this will solve the short-term problem and enable us to lift the boil water order. If tomorrow's samples come back clean and then the subsequent day's samples come back clean, we would be in a position to lift the boil water order and then focus on longer-term corrective actions um, that would be necessary. Um, we have kept the town, um, Representative Gerlich and Senator Rush fully informed and up to date on these developments and the actions that we're requiring Colonial Water um, to take. Um, we are absolutely 100% committed to continuing to do whatever is necessary to resolve this situation. And we will continue to do so as we would with any public water supply in the coming days, weeks, and months ahead. Um, that's a very quick overview, and I, I hope that's helpful, and I hope that people realize that um, the department is uh, extending a maximum commitment to trying to solve this situation for everyone. So thank you. Eric, thank you. That was a pretty comprehensive overview. I'm going to uh, ask uh, our board members if they have questions or comments. John? Sure. John, you're muted. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Eric, uh, two questions for you are, in, in your experience, how many towns in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, or if you can only speak to your jurisdiction, experience these types of contaminations per year? Uh, I could not tell you an exact number of uh, how many boiler situations there are in a given year. Um, I would say that in the summer months, particularly when it's hot out like it has been, um, that is um, the time where we most frequently have to issue boiler because of bacteriological contamination. Um, I think it gets a little more difficult with a system that doesn't routinely chlorinate its system. Um, 
trying to introduce chlorine to try to resolve bacteriological contamination where you don't um, consistently chlorinate or chlorinate at all makes it a little more difficult because with hot weather, that chlorine demand gets eaten up. Um, and so it's a difficult exercise to continue to try to feed it effectively throughout the system. Uh, I will say that I am reasonably confident that uh, the most recent plan that we are requiring them to implement and that they've committed to implementing uh, will be successful, but obviously the results will speak for themselves on that. Thank you. You, you began, you sort of segued right into my second question, and that is the time frame of this type of contamination. You mean in terms of uh, what's going to happen next or? Where to be resolved, typically. Uh, again, it varies. Um, I mean, we've had, uh, not often, um, I would say that this is on the longer end of a boil water order, uh, in my experience, uh, 25 years working for the department. We have had some that have lasted longer, uh, but most of the situations that we have are um, in situations where uh, systems are already chlorinating and there's some type of either mechanical failure or other explainable issue for why that contamination may have happened. And at this point, I, I don't think either we or Colonial Water Company have an understanding of what may have caused this event. That was actually my, my third question. So thank you. Actually, somebody <laughs> just texted me that the question, Eric, was, do you have an idea of what may have caused this event? So you're, you were... No, you. but the, yeah, the, again, and, and I might be getting into a little bit too much detail here, but so essentially there are two governing provisions within the drinking water regulations that um, apply to this situation. Because Colonial had um, bacterial contamination both in the source water in their wells and in the distribution system, that triggers two different requirements under the drinking water regulations, the total coliform rule and the groundwater rule. And under the groundwater rule, if you're unable to definitively determine what caused that event, then you are required to put in permanent disinfection and a very high level of advanced treatment. So even if you had contamination present in that wells, the level of disinfection and the amount of contact time in the system before it hits that first user um, would not result in a boil water order. And that's exactly what happened with uh, the Draper Road wells last year. They are in the process, they're under the terms of an administrative consent order to install what's known as full four log treatment. Thank you. I, I've just been reminded that uh, for those of us, uh, uh, Chair, Mr. Chairman, that are listening at home, we should identify ourselves as we are speaking. So for everybody that's not uh, on the video part, this is John Jeffries, member of the Board of Selectmen. Okay, John. Thank you. I'm going to move on. Thank to you, Eric. Um, You're welcome, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, Robin, any follow-up questions? I do. Um, Robin Hunter, Board of Selectmen. Um, Eric, thank you very much for a very comprehensive overview. I really appreciate that. I I have two questions for you. So my what my first question is: um, Is chlorination common on on public water supplies? Is a chlorination system a common system? Yes, it is probably the most common disinfectant used in public water supply systems. Um, for systems that are larger, have more miles of pipeline, uh, a lot of times they will use uh, chloramination instead because the chlorine residual lasts longer within the system. Um, that's what MWA uses. But for a system the size of Colonial Water Company, um, if permanent disinfection ends up being required, which I think is likely, um, it would likely be chlorination. Okay, thank you. And then I, I have a follow-up question on the testing. It is my understanding that you know, Colonial is required to test the quality of the water every 30 days. Um, you know, some those of us that are on Colonial water, a concern we have is it will get corrected, but will they be required to more frequently test their water in the short term until a long-term solution has been put in place? So can we as consumers yep. be comfortable drinking the water? 
Well, I, I think that the way that it usually works and what the regulations um, require is that once um, we receive those clean rounds of sampling, two clean rounds greater than 12 hours apart, a public water system would revert back to its normal sampling um, process, which for bacteria, as you correctly point out, uh, is once per month. Um, I think that at this juncture, um, our greatest interest is trying to resolve the situation um, for the residents. Um, but in terms of what may be required in the near or immediate or, or longer term future, I think that's too early to tell. I think we are interested in trying to better understand if a, if a cause can be identified or not. I appreciate that. And in your experience, and if you can't answer, that's fine. In your experience, how, how, how much time, how long would you expect the next phase of this um, project to take? So I, I completely agree with you. The most important thing right now is to, is to clean the drinking water so that the citizens of Dover can, can drink their water. But I, and I understand there will be a more of a long range plan that will be put in place. Um, how, how long do you think that will, that will take to put that plan in place? Um, well, uh, again, I have to be a little bit careful because that's kind of uh, pre-deliberative in nature, but I, I guess what I would say, and, and hopefully this can give some uh, surety to you, is that um, we are going to continue to be aggressive, um, both in the short, intermediate, and long-term to ensure that an effective plan is in place to hopefully avoid a situation like this recurring. Those are very reassuring words, so thank you very much. And again, I really appreciate you attending the, the meeting. Oh, you're welcome, my pleasure. Thank you very much, Eric. Um, and, and I too am reassured to make sure that we have independent oversight because this is a very serious uh, situation for obviously all the people here in Dover on, on uh, Columbia's work. So again, thank you for taking the time uh, to chat with us, much appreciated. You're very welcome. So I'm going to um, ask the folks at Colonial Water to um, give us an update on uh, what's going on with their operations and um, particularly the testing, augmenting what Eric had to say and uh, on the, all the efforts about communication and supplying water, et cetera, if you will. Gentlemen. Mr. Chairman, can I interrupt you for one second? Sure. Can we hear from Denise Garlic? Oh, sure. I'm sorry, Denise. Oh, that's, that's fine. Thank you, Bob. So I just wanted to say good evening to uh, all the residents of Dover who are depending on the work of our team here. And I just wanted to take one moment. I wanted to acknowledge the work and the commitment of the Board of Selectmen, particularly as evidenced not only by um, their presence, but through the work of the town administrator, Chris Dwelly. Um, he has been increasingly knowledgeable, always accessible. And with his leadership, we've seen many of the town departments um, and staff contributing to meeting the needs of the Dover residents. I wanted to take a moment around the Needham Dover Board of Health I'm sorry, the Dover Board of Health. And I wanted to um, commend these individuals who are volunteer elected individuals who are shouldering tremendous responsibility right now and showing their deep commitment and dedication. They are doing countless hours of work and meetings. And my district aide, Maureen Callahan, attends every one of those meetings remotely and I get briefed on them. And I read every email that I'm receiving from the Dover constituents. And I wanted to speak briefly, Senator Rush last week at the Board of Select meeting talked how we would be meeting to develop um, legislation. I wanted to um, remind the people of Dover that legislation would not be a quick fix, but we are learning so much in this process that we would write legislation to strengthen the hand of DEP in any way that would be helpful for all of the people of the Commonwealth um, there is nothing more vital, more critical to us than the, the water quality that um, individuals need. And I just want to thank Eric as well. EEP and the Executive Office of Environmental Affairs have been on alert, have been accessible, and are acting um, 
stridently on behalf of the citizens of Dover. And I am grateful for that. And to every person who's listening, all of this team that's working so hard is because we recognize that this is a public health crisis for the people who are impacted. We share your frustration. We are deeply concerned about the health impacts. And every member of this incredible team that I have talked about is dedicated to the resolution of this immediate problem and then a long-term discussion about how the town of Dover moves forward with good water quality for all of its residents. So thank you, Bob. So, so Denise, I was gonna let you do the wrap up, but that was like perfect. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. The, um, I, again, I mean, this is, a, this is an awful situation, but the, uh, the collaboration among you, Denise, working with the other departments in, at the state level, working with the company, um, it's terrific. Thank you very much. I mean, Absolutely. nobody wants to be where we are, but getting the help that we've been getting so far is just terrific and much, much appreciated. Absolutely. Um, so I will go back to the uh, Colonial Water Fellows to see if we can get an update uh, on where they're at. Gentlemen. Uh, good evening. This is Bob Gallo from Colonial Water. I just wanted to start out with the testing. Uh, we are uh, we continue to test on a daily basis um, from the wells and the distribution system, which include uh, several areas in the main main Dover system. And uh, the results uh, have been increasingly more favorable. Uh, we've we there were days where we had um, completely absent results or negative results in this, you know, uh, what you could say, and. <clears throat> And other days we've had uh, results where we've had one location out of all the testing locations that, you know, that we are sampling at um, where we've had a, an E. coli hit. So, uh, you know, so for the past three days, uh, it's been in one location, you know, it's two days it was at the uh, Francis Street, what's called the plant tap. And then today, it, the results we, we received today uh, was from a hit at Town Hall. So, um, so it, it's when we thought, when we thought we had it at the plant tap, you know, it, it's been, it, it turned up at the, at city hall. So it, it just, it, it tells us that we need to increase the chlorination of the system, which is what Eric alluded to before, um, beyond the sampling, uh, as Eric mentioned, we do have the emergency chlorination in effect that will be manning, uh, 24 hours a day. Uh, we are increasing the dosages within the system. Uh, to try and, you know, pull more of a chlorine residual to the outskirts uh, to make sure we're getting, you know, saturation throughout the system with the chlorine. Uh, in regards to uh, providing water to the citizens of Dover, um, we continue to uh, have our water distribution set up at the town garage. Uh, you know, we still have, you know, a tanker of water. We've been delivering, we've been having bottled water delivered. Uh, you know, I think we received another delivery today. So since we've started this endeavor, uh, we've had 1,100 cases of bottled water delivered, and um, and people are are coming to uh, to fill up and to and to get to get that bottled water. Uh, we have uh, provided signage at the site um, to give the hours of operation. Uh, on, in in regards to uh, the. Uh, the Council on Aging, uh, they had provided us with a list of individuals that um, that would likely need water. So we've been contact contacting them by phone every day. In some cases, people say they're fine and don't need any. Uh, in other cases, when they request you know more water, we 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 get it out to them, deliver it to them. Um, so as far as the di distribution of water goes, uh, I think that's been going very well. Uh, people that have been showing up at the site have been um, very appreciative and, you know, and, and for the large majority, I would say, understanding of the situation, even though it's, you know, it's very unfortunate. Uh, and, you know, as, as far as going forward, uh, as Eric mentioned, we're going to pursue permanent disinfection. Uh, we're going to continue passing out water between the hours of nine to six until this situation is resolved. Uh, in regards to our uh, reverse dialing system, uh, since this whole issue has, has come up, 
Uh, we've had a lot more people call in and give us this, give us their contact information. So at this point, uh, we have, you know, I, I would say nearly a hundred percent, uh, saturation on, on the, uh, database, you know, for, for the people in Dover, uh, we've been asking people when they show up, uh, to pick up water, if they're getting their messages and uh, they, they, they have been uh, last week when we were, when we were handing out water, we, there were some instances where people were not. So we took down their information and put it into the database uh, so they would receive uh, messages. Um, so, you know, from our last week, you know, from last week's meeting, uh, you know, we've certainly increased, uh, you know, the awareness about the water uh, being available. Uh, we continue pro to provide daily updates on our website and and through our reverse dialing system. Uh, every day there's a there's an update going out, uh, both via the system and on the website. Uh, we've also been in contact uh, in coordination with Chris Dwelly. Uh, we give him regular updates as well, uh, which uh, gets filtered then through uh, to the town social media. Um, so that's you know that's uh, you know it's a quick update of what we've been doing and. You know, I, I certainly think uh, the efforts we've made the past week and, the, and, and the, you know, continuing the test, uh, you know, I think are going to go a long way to resolving the situation. Uh, and, you know, as you mentioned uh, last week, Mr. Chairman, I think uh, I think our communication has really improved over the past week. So I'd like to hear any comments you may have on that. Well, um, I'm going to say that um... It, it is much, much improved, and we appreciate all the work that you guys have done. Um, I'm, a, I'm on Colony Water. I do visit the, uh, the water facility at the highway department, and it, it uh, you know, some of the early issues have clearly been uh, addressed. Um, it looks like a smooth operation now. Um, and we've, we've, we've had absolutely no problem um, uh, at at the highway department. Um, and, and I do appreciate, I mean, we do know in town how difficult it is to reach people, um, particularly if you're using an opt-in kind of uh, system. So we do appreciate that, that you have made really big strides in my view um, to make sure that people are uh, consistently informed on what's going on. And that's, that's a major improvement. Um, and it's a very, very valuable thing to be able to do. So thank you for that. I'm going to ask Mr. Dwelly if he has any other questions or comments that he might want to uh, bring to the fore. He's been intricately involved in, in, in the particular issue. And then I'll go to the other members of the board. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, one of the things that I think has been a, a theme that I've heard from community members um, and I'd ask this of uh, either Eric, if he's still available, or Colonial, um, if we could get a better sense of, um, of, what, uh, of what those independent third-party assessments look like. Are they currently underway? When can we expect results? Um, uh, I understand that Eric mentioned earlier that some facets of that are a little bit uh, pre-deliberative. Um, but if there's some further information that could help the community understand what to expect uh, in the next couple of weeks, I think I think that would be uh, that would be helpful. Um, but beyond that, Mr. Chairman, um, I don't have anything else to add that uh, that hasn't been stated this evening. Thank you, Chris. All right. Yeah, I'm still here. Um, <laughs> well, the regulations require a level two assessment to be completed 30 days from the onset of an incident which would be on or about July 10th. Um, but again, my understanding is that Colonial has already brought on an engineering consultant from Tata and Howard to assist them with this effort. And that um, assessment is actively underway. Yes, and just, this is Bob Galligan from Colonial Water. Just to add to that, uh, we, uh, we did have uh, the, the consultant from Tata and Howard out at the site yesterday, and he did his research, uh, did a site evaluation and we should have the results, uh, you know, hopefully within a week to week and a half. As, as Eric mentioned, we do have to uh, have, the, have that study sub submitted by July 10th, um, which obviously we will do, uh, but we'll have to wait to, to see uh, the results of level two assessment, which really is, uh, it's a study to, to see if they, can, if they can locate 
the source of the issue, the source of the E. coli. Uh, you know, being that it, we believe it is in the groundwater, it may be difficult. And again, to follow on with Eric said earlier, uh, we will will we will pursue permanent disinfection and uh, may even have to do the four log removal that we're uh, we're doing at Draper Road right now. Thank you, Eric. Um, Bob Springett. Um, my sense is the company, the DEC, are um, doing everything that is required and, and plus more to make sure that we can get at this issue as quickly as possible. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. Um, John, do you have anything for Bob? Uh, Bob, just with regards to the Drake Sorry, you're breaking progress. Break. Can you? You're breaking sorry, up, break. Can you hear me now, Bob? Uh, yes, you're, you're going in and out, but I can hear you right now. I lost you again. I'm sorry. Due to again. the Draper Road project, the you mentioned that it's a work in progress. Yes, yes, uh, we are in the process. Uh, we've submitted an initial round of design plans uh, to the DEP for comment. Uh, they have made some comments on it and we are going to um, revise the plans, uh, which uh, were minor comments. Um, so we're gonna revise those to resubmit. And uh, once we do get that approval, uh, we're gonna set a schedule for constructing the improvements um, which, you know, you know, as was mentioned earlier, it's, it's basically a function of getting more contact time with the chlorine. So what we're doing is, you know, basically adding additional piping at the station to, you know, to provide that, that contact time. So um, it is underway. Um, at, the, at this point, uh, last year, the E. coli hit was in well one, which is, has not run since. So well one is off and we are currently still running Draper Road on well two. Um, so uh, that does supplement the system, especially this time of year. And again, Mr. Chairman, I apologize uh, for those of you at home, John Jeffries, Board of Selectmen and Bob, I, I, if you're, I, I don't know if you're hearing the entirety of my question. I'm sorry, you are. Rather than the yeah, John, your internet connection is frozen. Okay, so while John reboots, Robin, do you have uh, any follow up questions? I do. And if you would like, I've been monitoring the Zoom chat. And would it be okay if I ask some of the questions that are being asked? On the Zoom chat, please do. Okay. Um, so one one of one of the questions, and this was a question that came up um, last week as well. There are concerns by residents on chlorination, and whether or not there are long term um, health or environmental effects of chlorination, and if there are other systems that um, can can be used other than chlorination, such as UV sanitation. So Eric, I don't know if that's something you can address for us. Uh, well, I guess I would say that uh, chlorination or chl chloramination are the most um, commonly used disinfectants in public water supply systems. Um, again, if we get into um, the situation where four log removal is required, um, because they can identify and correct a significant deficiency, um, UV cannot achieve that level of that level of disinfection. Jesus Christ. Um, Thank you. Another 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 um, question that's that's come up is um, is people are wondering if you know after the immediate correction of the system. Will their water, can they feel confident drinking the water? Well, I, once, the, once the disinfection is in place, um, 
you know, as far as bacteria out in the, in the distribution system, there, there really shouldn't be an issue with it. Uh, you know, sometimes if there's a, a water main break that may introduce something into the system, but again, once we, once we get a, a good chlorine residual out there, it is, it does did disinfect the system. So, um, so we would would not anticipate any issues uh, once we had that full uh, chlorination and potentially the four lot removal in place. So I may I may be misunderstanding <clears throat> the chlorination a temporary fix or a permanent fix. Well, you know, at this point, well, right right now it's just temporary and it could potentially be permanent. But you're not going to continue to do it, and that's what I mean by permanent. Yes, well, it, it will be um, in our discussions with the DEP today, uh, you know, we discussed that we will keep the emergency chlorination in place until permanent chlorination is permitted and instituted. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate that clarification. So then, you know, people should feel confident drinking the water once we get the release of the no boil order. That's correct. Yeah, because we are, you know, once the once the boil order is lifted, we will still be under, um, you know, uh, continuous uh, chlorination and disinfection. So, um, so the, the the emergency chlorination is is the short term solution until we get through the boil order, and it will continue beyond the boil order, and then uh, we do have to go through, uh, you know, you know the mass DEP process of getting. Um, you know, of, of getting the new chlorination, the permanent chlorination um, approved. It is a permitting process and we do have to provide some, um, you know, you know, some design work for it. So it, it is something that uh, we will work towards, but in the meantime, we will have that temporary or what we would call emergency chlorination in place. Okay. And then there, there also seems another question that has come up frequently, and it actually came up um, yes, uh, last week as well, is that residents um, believe that they need to flush the pipes in their homes to ensure that there's no E. coli. Can you, can you comment on that? Yeah, if, if uh, you know, as we're putting the chlorine into the system and getting a residual, I mean, people are still... Um, I would, you know, people are still irrigating. They're still, uh, you know, running water in their house. Once, uh, once the order is lifted, I mean, we would certainly um, suggest, you know, turning on all the fixtures in the house, you know, for 30 minutes or so, um, just to just to be sure that everything is flushed through and and then they do have uh, a good, you know, a good chlorine residual running through their pipes. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I'm I'm. I'm finished, and John seems to be back online. Yeah, but we don't know if we can hear him, so we'll get to ask you a shot. question now, John. All right, John. <laughs> this is the, it's the best part of your meeting when you can't hear me, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> rather than uh, delay this, or rather than belabor the point, I, I, I just uh, would like to say, and I again, I apologize, Robin. I don't know the questions you covered, so rather than potentially repeating questions, I just wanna say a quick thank you to Representative Denise Garlick for the collaborative efforts that she has undertaken on our behalf. Um, thank you to the Mass DEP. Um, I, I just wanna most importantly thank the residents for their patience. Um, this is a, a time where it is uh, unprecedented in terms of we had a, a drought, we've had a heat wave actually in the middle of this process and so the, the most people are, have, have dealt with quite a lot at this point in time. We just wanna thank you for your patience, understanding, uh, as Bob has mentioned and Robin Hunter has mentioned, the um, folks at Colonial Water are taking this extremely seriously. They've, they have responded. There is going to be an additional response. There'll be, we will continue to monitor everything on your behalf. I will say personally, I am as Robin is and Bob is a Colonial Water customer. The communication has been, as Bob said earlier, dramatically improved and we will continue to make sure there's continuous improvement in that process. I know through the chat there are 
people have not been communicated with us to communicate. Um, so thank you for your patience. Thank you for the, your understanding. We will continue to move to resolve this as quickly as possible. Mr. Chairman. Thanks, John. Um, I, I will remind people that um, really our focus, um, uh, as, been, as Eric talked about, as Bob Gallo talked about, uh, is really right, focused completely on resolving the current problem as quickly as possible. I think that, um, I think that um, it's a frustration for all involved that this has carried on as long as it has, but it is what it is. Um, everybody is, seems to be working in good faith. Everybody seems to be pulling on all their oars at the same time. And progress just simply is slow. And this particular bacteria has been problematic. Um, once this um, current situation is resolved and resolved to everyone's satisfaction, uh, meeting all of the requirements of the state, we'll, we'll then take, we'll then certainly step back and begin to think much more strategically about how we, how and what we need to do in Dover to ensure that we have, you know, water supply, capable providers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but that's, that's the next step. Um, and it would, you know, it, we need to fix the current problem. And, and I, this, the intention of this meeting, and I I'd probably like to suggest we have another one next week so that we can very closely continue to monitor and work with uh, people who are trying to help us resolve the situation. Um, so the, the um, I think the other question, if there's another question that I think comes up about the reimbursement uh, process for Colonial. Yes. Yeah, I can, I can speak to that. This is Nicola Chant. Yep. Um, so as, you know, right, right from the beginning of the boil order, we have been accepting uh, re receipts for any water that's been purchased. Those are presently uh, being collected. Uh, we have a stack of those that are here at the office that are being processed. Um, so those reimbursements will begin to go out. Um, I also uh, put up on the website earlier today a reimbursement calculation worksheet. Um, so what we did was we, we wanted to take a comprehensive approach because we know that this has been a question that has been kind of looming out there and people are wondering what that reimbursement is going to look like. And um, we, we want to take an approach where, you know, we feel as though that uh, we're hitting kind of the, the main points on what a reimbursement should be. And uh, first and foremost would be obviously consumption. Um, so again, uh, th th there's, there's three separate parts, three separate parts to the reimbursement uh, worksheet, which is again on, on uh, colonialwatercompany.com. And this first part is a little comprehensive, but uh, basically what it does is it, it arrives at a uh, gallon per day per household that'll be reimbursed. And um, essentially uh, DEP has a target uh, target amount of 65 gallons per day per capita of usage. Uh, so that's the number that we're gonna utilize is 65 gallons per day per person in the household. And, um, and obviously we have to make an assumption or an estimate of what the number of people are that are in a household. So. Uh, a safe number that we utilized on that was three and a half persons per house. And then that would give us a 12 gallon per day. And then we'll multiply that by the consumption rate. And then we'll multiply that again by the number of days that the boil order is in place. And that, that'll that satisfy the, the water portion itself. Uh, part two of that reimbursement will be, because uh, there, there is a standard, a standard fee or, or a, a base fee best charge on each of the residential accounts. Um, so we'll do the same thing as a, on a prorated basis. So we'll take that, that standard fee, divide it by 30 days, multiply it again by the number of days that the boil order is in process. Um, that'll be added with the consumption amount. And then lastly is uh, an inconvenience fee or a, uh, a, a, a credit that we utilize for our inconvenience that this has caused as well as um, any, any customers that have had to go out to, you know, to purchase uh, paper plates, for example, 
or uh, anybody that may have had to have purchased you know, additional hand sanitizer. Uh, we want to be able to wrap that uh, inconvenience fee into this as well so that it's all coincided into uh, more, more or less kind of a comprehensive uh, credit. Um, so that, that worksheet, again, is, is, it's up on the website. Um, if anybody has any questions, we'd be happy to walk anybody through that. Um, but we do, uh, we, we do feel that we, we took a pretty comprehensive approach to make sure that we're addressing kind of the main point of a water delivery, uh, water service. Thank you. I, um, I, we, we do have an, uh, one other question that came up. Um, so we're handing out an awful lot of plastic bottles and we're a recycling conscious community. We were wondering if you could set up uh, at the highway department a facility to take back some of the plastic uh, bottles that we're handing out so that our recycling uh, facility doesn't get overloaded. Yeah. Are you yeah, guys willing to take a better consider? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't see why not, why we can't come up with something. Um, there's going to be some logistics that are involved in that. And uh, we would certainly want to consult with, uh, with Chris Dwelly as well on a placement for such type of container ship, I would imagine. Um, so, you know, let us, let us put our heads together here over the next uh, day or so to come up with some ideas on how we could satisfy um, that request. But yes, I don't, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to satisfy that request. Okay. Thank you. I'm gonna go back to the board members um, to, to see if there is any additional questions or comments they have. John? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. What I would suggest is Kate you know, in the selectman's office is in the process of tabulating the questions, comments, concerns that we did not get to this evening specifically. Um, it's virtually impossible with, with the amount of time and the, uh, the, uh, the number of different questions and concerns that people have had both, both last week and this week. We're trying to, so I want to assure everyone that we are making note of all the questions, comments, and concerns, attempting to address them both on this, these types of calls offline and in, a, as you've heard from just about everyone this evening, the continuous communication that we have with both Colonial Water, Denise's office, and Mass DEP. We will take your questions, concerns. We will answer them. We will try to get everyone's questions answered before our next meeting. And with that, again, I'd just like to thank everyone for their participation, continued patience. With regards to the question of the recycling, it, it is, we are bringing up a lot of plastic bottles, and yet we have to also comply with, with all the safety measures that the Board of Health has asked us and Colonial Water with regards to dispensing drinking water that is available for everyone. So it, it's, there's never a perfect solution. We're all trying to do the best that we possibly can. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, John. Robin? I do not have any further comments. Okay. Um, I, I thank everybody. I, you know, again, I appreciate Colonial's improvement on communication. I very much appreciate the DEP attending this, this a meeting this evening. So thank you again, Eric. And of course, it goes without saying we appreciate everything Denise is doing for the town. Thank you, Robin. So uh, I'm going to echo John a little bit and um, you make sure that everyone is aware that we do capture the questions. We will um, answer those questions and make them available for everyone so that um, we can be as communicated broadly and as deeply um, as possible. Um, so I'm going to go back to, to our terrific representative, Denise Garlick, to see if she has thoughts um, that she would like to share before um, we move to close the meeting. Denise? So thank you, and, and thank you for coming back to me, but I'm hoping very much that the concerned citizens of Dover, the people who are customers of Colonial Water have an increased level of confidence, not that the problem is solved, but that all the work that is 
necessary to do to solve the problem is taking place and that we're not only trying to resolve this crisis, but we're committed to a long-term understanding of what's happened and how to move into the future safely. I knew keeping you for last was the right idea. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you, Denise. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Colonial Water Bob. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming in, participating, and listening to what's going on. I think um, if I have to get the consent of the other two members, uh, I'd like to have a follow up meeting next week as well, just to stay on top of this. Robin? I, I concur. John? Absolutely. Okay, so we'll, we'll post something um, and do a follow up again uh, in a week's time. So um, thank you all again. Um, have a good weekend. I move to adjourn. Before we adjourn, I would just like to remind everybody that we have um, an information session to go over the budget in anticipation of town meeting on Saturday at 10 a.m. So anybody that has questions should should connect to the Zoom call and ask them. So thank you, Robin. You saved my bacon. <laughs> um, so we've had three information sessions about the uh, fiscal 21 budget. Um, the last one is going to be Saturday at 10 a.m. Um, it's really important um, to take the time to review the, the warrant articles that are going to be presented. It's a town meeting that's going to be um, held under special rules so that we can um, affect the budget for fiscal year 21. There is material that has been posted on the website that provides a great deal of detail about um, what we're planning for fiscal year 21. Please take advantage of, of that information and then please participate um, in the meeting on Saturday so that we can hear what you have to say, what you're concerned about, and that we can have an effective, safe, and efficient meeting on Monday. Um, John? Uh, thank you, Bob. Uh, well said. Just one other thing I would like to remind all the residents that are on the call this evening of Farm Road, of um, Junction Street, um, please be patient when you leave your house tonight or this afternoon. The city, we have our, our Dover Sherburn Regional High School, our, um, our virtual drive through graduation is taking place as we speak, so, or took place. Maybe it's done by now. Robin? I'm, I'm, I'm done talking, thank you. Would you like to make a motion to adjourn? I would like to make a motion to um, adjourn the meeting for this evening. Do I have a second? Seconded. All in favor? Aye, John Jeffries. Aye, Robin Hunter. Aye, Bob Springett. Thank you all again.